All close to the assembly of voters. 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 So we will be reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 28, Matsya, the Lord's Fish Incarnation, Text 49. Nayat Prashada Yuta Bhagadesham Did I say Om Namo Bhagavata? No? Yeah, okay. Anye Sadeva Gura Vochana Svayam. Anye Sadeva Gura Vochana Svayam. Kartum Samita Pavavanti Pumsa. Kartum Samita Pavavanti Nayat prasada yuta bhagalesham Nayat prasada yuta samita prabhavanti pumsas Tamishvaram tvam sharanam prapatye Nayat Prashada Yuta Bhagalisham Anye Sadeva Gura Vochana Svayam Kartum Sameta Prabhavanti Pumsas Tamishvaram Tvam Sharanam Prabhatye Nayat Prashada Yuta Bhagalesham Anisha Deva Kravochana Svayam Kartum Sameta Prabhavanti Pumsa 
Kartam Sameta Tarvante Kinsam Tamishvam Tam Sayanam Tapatye Nayat Prasada Yudabhagalesham Nayat Prasada Yudabhagalesham Angir Sadeva Gravo Chanas Payam Sameta Prabhavanti Pumsas Kartum Sameta Prabhavanti Pumsam Vishwaram Tuam Sharanam Prapati Tamishwaram Tuam Sharanam Prapati Nayat Pashata Yutabhaga Lesham Angesha Deva Gua Bhojana Svayam Kastam Sameta Pavavanti Pumsan Tamishvam Tvanshanam Papatye Nayat Pashada Yutabhaga Lesham Anisha Deva Goa Vojana Svayam Sameta Prabhavanti Pumsa Kastam Sameta Pavlancha Pumsa Tamishvam Tamsalanam Prabhavati Ladies Angesha Deva Goa Vojana Svayam Tumma Samita Pabhavanti Pumsa Tamishvam Tvam Saranam Papatye Na Not Yat Pashada of the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Adyuta Bhagalesham. Only one ten thousand. And ye, others, cha, also, deva, even the demigods, gurava, the so-called gurus, Shana, the total population, Svayam, personally, Kartum, to execute, Sameta, all together, Prabhavanti, can become equal, equally able, Pumsaha, by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Tam, unto Him, Ishvaram, unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Tvam, unto You, Sharanam, Shelter, Papatye, let me surrender. Translation and purpose by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki. Neither all the demigods, nor the so-called gurus, nor all other people, either independently, independently or together, can offer mercy that equals even one ten thousand of yours. Therefore, I wish to take shelter of your lotus feet. Purport. It is said, Kamaista is tajan Prabhatyantyena Devataha. People in general, being motivated by material desires, worship the demigods to get fruitive results very quickly. People generally do not become devotees of Lord Vishnu, since Lord Vishnu never becomes the order supplier of his devotees. 
Lord Vishnu does not give a devotee benedictions that will create further demand, demands for benedictions. By worshipping the demigods, one may get results. But as described in Bhagavad Gita, antavattu falam tisham tat bhavalt alpa medasam. Whatever great benedictions one may achieve from the demigods are all temporary. Because the demigods themselves are tem temporary, their benedicts are also temporary and have no permanent value. Those who aspire for such benedictions have a poor fund of knowledge. Tat bhavat yalpa medasham. The benedictions of Lord Vishnu are different. By the mercy of Lord Vishnu, one can be completely freed from material contamination and go back home, back to God. Therefore, the benedictions offered by the demigods compare, compare to even one thousandth of the Lord's benedictions, cannot compare to even one ten thousandth of the Lord's benedictions. One should not, therefore, try to obtain, obtain benedictions from the demigods or false gurus. One should aspire only for the benediction offered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, 1866, Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. That is the greatest benediction. So, read the verse again. Nayat prasada yuta bhagalisham anyesa deva kuravochana svayam kartum sameta prabhavanti pumsas Neither all the demigods, nor the so-called gurus, nor all other people, either independently or together, can offer mercy that equals even to one ten thousand of yours. Therefore, I wish to take shelter of your lotus feet. Shakshun militam ye na tas my siko vainama. Shicheta yamano pistam stap tam ye na butalis from Rupkadam yam dadati svapalanticam. Vande ham siyo siyo da pada kamanam sikum vaisnavam sa. Siyo pam jagatam sakanaragnatam vidam tam sativam sotvetam savutam bhajan saitam sikrishna tanyadevam. Siyo radha krishna padam sakanalita shivishakam vidam sa. He krishna guna sinu dina bandhatyat pate kaupe sakopka kanta radha kanta namastate. Tapta kansna kaurangi radhe vindavanashvi. Vishavana Siddhadevi Panama Mahaipri Vanka Kalpta Vishaki Pasan Vaisha Patnam Pavan Vyo Vaishna Vyo Namanam Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pamu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Vastaya Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswata Devi Gauravani Pachari Nirvasesa Srinivati Bhaskachari Desatarani Srila Prabhupada Ki So these are the prayers of King Satyavrata that um, he points out oh, that taking shelter of the demigods is not a good idea that um, because 
the demigods themselves have the same problem as we. We take birth, we die. They take birth, we die. So what can they offer? The demigods uh, sakam bhaktas. They have slight material desires. Well, slight, they want to control the entire universe. <laughs> That's what they want. But as a service to the Lord, that's different. They do it as a service of the Lord. But they have material desires. So, it's, bak it's bhakti, but because they have still slight material desires, there's a certain a serious problem in their rendering of devotional service. When Bhumi was in difficulty, because all these um, all, all these kings were ex trying to exploit her for their own sense gratification, she went to Brahma, and Brahma said, "Yes, let's invoke the mercy of the Supreme Lord." I cannot solve that. But they went to the sweated fib, to the milk ocean, at the beach, they were praying to the Supreme Lord. Because Kshirdakasaya Vishnu was far, far away in, in the milk ocean, served by Lakshmi, lying on the bed of Anantashis. And they could not see her. So they were all standing on the beach and meditating on the Supreme Lord. But only Brahma could have contact with Kshirodakasaya Vishnu. He, he only could have, have this contact. Because he was a pure devotee. He's a pure devotee. No material desire. He could come in contact with the Supreme Lord. So, if you have still material desires, you can not be peaceful. Your mind is not completely controlled. Krishna says, Sitatvana Prasantatma. Yeah, Sitat, Sita Atmana. When we have conquered the mind, is Prasanta, is peaceful, but they are not peaceful. And therefore, Paramatma Samaita, finding Krishna in their heart, they will not not feel the presence of the Lord. And that's problematic. Only Brahma could receive a message from the Supreme Lord, come in contact, and there was communication that, uh, because, yes, lust, av avritam jhanam etena, it covers your eternal knowledge of your constitutional position. So demigods are not self-realized souls. They have not realized their constitutional position. Yes, they have realized that they are a servant of Krishna, but they did not realize that everything belongs to Krishna and is for his service. That, uh, so the demigods themselves, they are after temporary things. So what can they offer us? That, uh, so these demigods, we know that Kshirodakasai Vishnu communicated to Brahma and announced, I will appear, and, and he asked them to take all birth in the, in the Yadu dynasty. So all these demigods, they took birth in the Yadu dynasty. It does not mean that all the demigods were, were Yadus, or all the Yadus were demigods, but most of them. And of course, they were living in Dvarka, 
with Lord Krishna. And uh, yes, of course, there is also Udav was living in work, and he was a pure devotee. And sometimes in Dvarka, when uh, when rainy clouds would go over, come over the I think the, the Vaiharta I forgot the name, the the rainy clouds would come and it would remember Udav about Krishna because they were blue. <laughs> as Krishna's body, and Udav started to dance like a madman. So all these residents of Dvarka, these Yadus, they were thinking, this Udav is a little mad. But, uh, but Udav, how was Udav think, thinking about these Yadus? This, the, this. He was thinking, they are like the fish in the water. A fish in the water, when, the, when it's full moon, cannot understand what the moon is. <coughs> so, all these yadus, they live together with Krishna, but they cannot understand Krishna. It's a problem. <laughs> that, uh, so, of course, Sarvopad, infinite muktam, tat parat, vana nirmanam, rishikesh, rishikesh, sevanam, bhaktirutam. This is the definition of pure devotion by Narada Muni. Sarva upadi. We must give up all upadis, all false identifications. But these demigods cannot do that. They think themselves a great controllers in the universe. And what's the result of thinking like that? In the 13th chapter of the Gita, uh, text 8 to 12, we have 21 items of, the, of knowledge. And uh, or the, of the process to get knowledge. And what's the first item? Who knows? Um, it from humility. Humility, if you are humble, you, are, you have knowledge. <laughs> that a uh, good candidate to get knowledge at least and realize it. But that's the problem with the demigods. And we see Indra sometimes he gets bewildered. He gets bewildered and becomes proud. The pride that uh, not humble because this power and this opulence, if, if we think it's mine, then it's an intoxication and pride grows. And that's a great obstacle for to attain pure devotional service. That uh, so in but Krishna Krishna is different. Ananya Sintyantama Yajana Payapasti Tisam Nitya Vyuktyam Yoga Shema Yoga Shema Bhavami Bhavami Yeah one gets Yes Krishna says I protect everything what my devotees ha my devotee has and I give him more and more. <laughs> but what does it mean? Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport what it really means. Krishna is our well wisher. He protects the spiritual advancement that we already made. And he gives us more opportunities to engage in his service. And that is his mercy. And that's good for us. That's what Krishna gives. He gives us the association of devotees, that uh, so many opportunities 
to serve. And, but if a devotee, if a devotee becomes a very attached, very attached to something, to relatives or whatever in this world, and the devotee wants to become pure, but is struggling to give it up, to give it up. That uh, so, it's like Krishna is like a mother or a father. The the child is attached to playing. And uh, the mother said, oh, it's time, it's time for your meal. And the child said, no, no, I, I won't continue playing. And the child does not come. And the mother had to say three times, and still the, the child does not come. Then, what does the mother do? She takes away the toy and the child starts start to cry. But it has to come. So, Krishna is so merciful sometimes. Uh, after, yeah, if he sees his devotee struggling and he cannot let this attachment go, then he comes and breaks it by force. And that's mentioned in 1088, verse 8. You know the verse? No? no. Okay, then I'll get it here. In Shiman Bhagavad. Because it, it's, it's so important that we know we want to develop a relationship with Krishna. So, how does Krishna relate with his devotees? How is he going to help him, them? That... Uh, then... Shiman Bhagavatam. These are the... This is the book with the... Oh, I have it here. Shi Bhagavan Vacha Yasyaham Anujinami When I give my mercy to my devotee. So, how do you know that you get the mercy of, of Krishna? He's going to say, Aishi tattanam sanai tattanam tyam tyam tyasya svachana dukha dukidam. The personality of God that said, if I special favor someone, I surely deprive him of his wealth. You lose everything. You lose everything. Then the relatives and friends of such a poverty take a man, abandon him. Yes, they reject him. It's not poor, yeah, poor man. Let him go. In this way, he suffers one distress after another. So that's when you get the mercy. That, uh, but it's important to understand that that we are struggling, entangled in the material energy. When, when I came to Krishna Consciousness, or to the movement, uh, because becoming Krishna Consciousness is still to happen, but when I came to this movement, then, uh, well, I was a family man in the 80s. I had uh, a very nice business. I got a lot of money, quite wealthy. That's uh, in a few hours, 
few years I I bought my own house and so on. And I had uh, a wife and two children, like um, uh, a common man in Belgium. A nice job, and yeah. But then I came in contact with the devotees and I started to chant Hare Krishna. I started to chant 16 rounds of the Hare Krishna my mantra. Then my wife said, I think I need another husband. She got a relation with someone else. And what could I do? And at my, at my job, my boss said, I think I need another bookkeeper. So I continued chanting Hare Krishna. And then my family said, my father said to me, you are not my son anymore. Okay, I continued chanting. What could I do? I joined the temple. I got divorced. I lost everything, everything in two years time just by chanting Hare Krishna. So? And I joined the temple. That, uh, so I, I was situated in a most entangling material situation. And Krishna mercifully plucked me out and put me in the association of devotees. That is mercy. That is mercy. Otherwise, I would have stayed rotten in this material world. So, it's good to understand what real mercy is. That uh, sometimes we think a little romantic about Krishna consciousness. I chant Hare Krishna and will, I will have a nice life in this material world. And then go back to Godhead. But you have to be become purified. That, uh, Without the pain of purification, you cannot become purified. And sometimes it's painful. That, uh, yes. And at the moment when it's happen, happening, you don't see that it's the mercy. You see later that it's the mercy. So the, the point here is that Krishna is our well-wisher. Is not going to give us wealth as um, if we don't need it, if, if it's an obstacle, if we are attached to it, that it gives us what's good for us. It gives us transcendental knowledge, it gives, gives us the association of devotees, he gives us engagement in worshipping of his deity. He gives us the opportunity to serve great devotees like Prabhupada, Gurumaj and so on. That, uh, so that is real mercy because that will lead to, your, to the purification of your heart. What leads to the Purification of the heart is Krishna's mercy. That, uh, so these are very important lessons to be learned. And these demigods must still also learn this lesson. And, Shilab, and we see that Lord Krishna takes care of, his, of it. He is the well-wisher of Indra and he's going to remove Indra's sprout. Right. So that's uh, so. This is uh, what Sheila Prabhupada writes in the purport here, and of course the benedictions of offered by the demigods they are useless because they are temporary and materially material. 
But it's not that we have to be averse, averse to wealth. That like Sudan Vipra, he was averse. He, he did not want any wealth because he was afraid that, it, that he would become attached and, become, and that it become an obstacle for his devotional service. So he did, he did not want it. So the question is raised many times that why was Sudan Vipra, why was he poor? He was the best friend of Krishna, so why was he poor? Because he wanted to be poor. It was his desire. But that was not 100% correct. Because they, this is not our philosophy, to be averse of sense gratification. That uh, our philosophy is to be indifferent to sense gratification. That uh, the sin nectar of devotion, that uh, we should become indifferent, knowing it belongs to Krishna, and we use it in Krishna's service without being attached. So in the past times of Su Sudan Vipra, we see that his wife says, yes, we are so poor, I can't, I can't feed you properly. And it's my duty to do that. So please go to Krishna. So that, ask him for some wealth so that I can do my service properly. So Sudan went, he went to see Krishna, and we know in Krishna book how, how nicely he was received, Krishna putting him on his bedstead, washing his feet, sprinkling the water over all the screens, and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, personally doing puja for him and serving him. That, uh, but still, Sudan Vipra did not want to ask for any wealth. But he had this chipped rice with him, which was not, yeah, which his wife had borrowed from the neighbors. He, he was even too poor to, to, to get some chipped, chipped rice. It's why we had to borrow it from the neighbors. So, and he brought it for Krishna. He didn't want to give it, but Krishna snatched it from, from under his armpits. So that was his, that is what he gave to Krishna. But he gave something which was beyond his possessions. And that was a problem for Krishna to reciprocate. Because Krishna cannot give anything beyond his possession because everything is his. So, but then when Sudan was in uh, Dvarka, he saw all this opulence that uh, and he was thinking they are also devotees and they are not averse. So his, his heart changed and he became indifferent. And when he came back home and he saw that his, his small hut was transformed, was transformed in a, in a, in a big palace that uh, He understood, Krishna wants me to have this. Krishna wants me to enjoy this. So he accepted in the mood, yeah, Krishna wants me to do it. That uh, wants to accept it. And then his, his inner aversion was corrected. It became, from aversion, it became indifferent. Because aversion to sense gratification and, or attachment to sense gratification, it's the same problem. 
It's one is negative, the other is positive. That uh, yes. So it's not that Krishna takes everyone's wealth away. <laughs> no. If we are too attached, he will do. And we can't give it up. That. But to pure devotees like Palat Maharaj, Truva Maharaj, he gave so much opulence that was no problem because they, they understood this is not mine. Krishna gives, gives me that for my service. So that's different. Of course, if we look at this, uh, usually devotees here certainly do not pray to demigods. <laughs> so we don't have that problem directly, but still, the problem is in our heart mostly. Because Krishna says, Satur Vidavich Antimam Yechana Sukritaryana Achta Shikna Shrahti Jani Shabaratashiva. A four kinds of people who come to me, those who are in distress, those who are, are curious, who are and those who are want wealth, and those who want to know the absolute truth. So they they have all Material desires. In the beginning, when we come to this movement, mostly is not with the idea of pure love, pure devotional service. Because we don't know what it is. We don't know it. That, uh, and, but it, it's good in the beginning. We are impure. We want to go back to Godhead. We want liberation. So we perform the voice and service, we will achieve it. But when you come to the, to the platform of pure devotion and service, then it becomes different. Then you say to Krishna, I'm your servant, and uh, in whatever condition you want me to serve, material world or spiritual world, as you like, you just please engage me. I'm your puppet, your instrument. Let me dance, let me dance, let me dance. So that's different. That's the platform of Anya Pilastas Union, Jana Kramadin, Anavitam, Anakulena Krishnanu, Shilnam Bhaktiutama. So pure devotion and service to please Krishna just without asking something in return. No material desires to fulfill, no desire for liberation. Because the desire for liberation is in, in essence a material desire because you want to be liberated from the distress. That, uh, but the devotee says to Krishna, pure devotee, I'm not praying for that. I'm praying for your service. I'm praying to never forget your lotus feet. Please always engage me in your service. That, uh, and when the heart is pure like that, and you come to that level, then you start to feel love for Krishna. And you are already beyond liberation. Nothing to worry about. That, uh, yeah, so, and then, we become intelligent. We get this is spiritual IQ. We understand the situation. That uh, and but those who take shelter of demigods, all Pamida Sham yeah, that uh, they lost their intelligence and they are asking for poison for again becoming entangled and to prolong their stay in this material world that uh, like in Fritrasur he was in the body of a demon but he was a pure devotee <laughs> and 
At the other side you have Indra. And it looks at externally, at the end it, it took a time to get off the head of Vitrasur. But, but, but he said before he even started to cut off the head of Vitrasur, Vitrasur already left for the spiritual world. That, uh, and Indra stays rotting in this world, Srila Prabhupada, right? So that is the difference. So the desire to get rid of all con contamination of the heart and to act for purification is very important. And that is the benediction Krishna gives his devotees. To purify their heart, and when their heart is pure, their love for Krishna becomes fully manifested. Because devotion in the heart we can only feel when the heart is pure. Unless the, of course, when it, during the Amartya Nivriti, when the heart is purified, we start to get, to get a reflection of this love. And that's already very ecstatic. That, uh, that, yeah. But the, the, the real benediction Krishna gives is the association of his pure devotees. That uh, just by this association, by their association, you can experience spiritual consciousness. The whole atmosphere becomes Vaikuntha. Very beautiful. So that's the benediction Krishna gives. If we try to surrender him to him, then he delivers us from all sinful reaction. Means he purifies us, and we come to our constitutional position. And if you are a pure devotee, it doesn't matter you are in the material or the spiritual world. You don't identify with the body. There's no suffering. Because sometimes, sometimes we think, yeah, oh, these Pandavas, they suffer. That, that's, so I should never become a devotee. I'm going to end up like the Pandavas, so much trouble. But, and, and we see that during their exile, even Krishna visited them. But they never, they, they never asked anything for Krishna, to Krishna. Although they knew he was Supreme Personality of God. Because they were pure in heart, there was no suffering. Of course, Krishna has brought Arjun, has brought Arjun under Yoga Maya, so that he could facilitate the speaking of Bhagavad Gita, because that's one of the functions of Arjun. At the end of the Mahabharat, you have Yudhisthira Maharaj, he arrives in heaven and he sees Duryodhan and, 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 and Dronacharya enjoying there with uh, angelic women, drinking wine, and whatever they do there. Uh, that, uh, and, and he's asking where are the Pandavas <laughs> and he's informed they are in hell so he's going to hell and he's and yes they are in hell for a few moments and then they they come to but these Pandavas then go to see Krishna and they say yeah, it's not the place where we want to be Krishna said, yes, let's go to the next universe. And they go with him to the next universe to perform the same drama. A little differences, but it's the same drama over and over. So they are eternal associates of Krishna. They want only to serve Krishna. They are not interested in the heavenly planets. So they are just pure devotees. A pure devotee does not suffer. But like the, the Vrajavasis, they suffer for, from, from separation. 
but they don't have false ego. Their, their suffering is spiritual ecstasy, a higher bliss, the highest bliss you can have in separation. And that is what Lord Chaitanya brought us. And this feelings of serving and feelings of separation is the highest. Anyway, that's too high philosophy. And that, uh, let's go back to the verse. I read it once again. Neither all the demigods, nor the so-called goes, nor all other people, either independently or together, can offer mercy that equals even one ten thousand of yours. Therefore, I wish to take shelter at your lotus feet. So, any question, please? Okay. I must, uh, I'm, I'm a big nonsense because nobody has understood anything, otherwise you would have questions for me. But anyway, thank you very much. Shantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki. Jesus, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam ki.